Hello everyone, welcome to WizConnect, connecting you with the art of data visualization and storytelling. My name is Sagar Kapoor. I'm part of customer success team at Tableau. So WizConnect is your weekly Tableau community call, which helps you in learning best practices about Tableau, tips and tricks, and learning from the Tableau Zen masters, uh, Tableau champions and Tableau ambassadors, how you can go ahead and upskill your skills in Tableau. So all the sessions which are presented in this connect are recorded to our YouTube channel. Go ahead, subscribe to it. Some great content waiting for you. We have a LinkedIn group. Go ahead, connect with each other and learn from each other. With that, let me go ahead and introduce our speaker for today. Before that, if you have not already gone ahead and check this Tableau learning path, which I have created on my Tableau public profile, go ahead and check it out. It's a consolidation of all the Tableau resources of label, which will help you to get started with Tableau, or maybe just go ahead and bookmark some of the important links about Tableau. Yeah, go ahead and check out. I will highly recommend just go ahead and check out this Tableau quiz, which will help you to evaluate your Tableau skills. With that, let me go ahead and introduce our speaker for today. His name is Caesar Pico. So Caesar has been in the BI space for close to 15 years. He has helped a number of organizations take actionable paths and make decisions on data that might not have ever used for insights. Currently, he is a senior software engineer at T-Mobile. Caesar has helped establish a number of centers of excellence at these orgs to help analysts, engineers, and data scientists develop an internal sharing community. So without further ado, Caesar, over to you. Thank you, Sagar. Um, and thank you to the uh, audience also for uh, having me on. This is my, my second time on AbyssConnect. Um, today, I want to go and uh, get into a little bit about uh, your career, your database career, and uh, just kind of what, what this means and kind of wh where is this taking you. So uh, before I get started, I kind of want to uh, go through and give you a little bit of a, a little bit of an introduction of who is this guy? Who's talking to you? Well, my name is Cesar Pico. I'm a Tableau ambassador, a social ambassador, which means I'm online a lot. I'm on uh, um, Twitter and LinkedIn and um, all the different the, the different social media channels uh, quite frequently. So you'll probably see me or have seen my name around. But uh, I'm also by day a uh, senior software engineer at T-Mobile. Um, to be completely honest, I haven't really written any code since, I mean, pretty much original code since 2011, but I do a lot of work in data and data visualization. Um, and I help and support a team of engineers really move on to the future of what telecommunications can get to um, within the next few years um, of our organization. But I, I don't necessarily want to go too much in detail about me. What I want to do is I want to talk about you and really I want to talk about kind of where your data biz career is taking you and kind of what 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 does this mean? So uh, let, let's 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 consider you for a minute here. So you've done an excellent job and um, really you started off. Learn Tableau, learn this new skill. You've had a lot of success with some dashboards. You've connected to some really great data sets. You've made some excellent joins. And you're learning this product and you're becoming a, an expert really quickly. Your boss is really happy with you. Their boss is really happy with you. Um, you're presenting to people. You've gone through and you've gotten a couple of certifications and you're really doing great work. You're making an impact to the organization. And uh, well, we were all there. We all saw it. All of a sudden something unforeseen happened. Globally, we ran into a pandemic. And this kind of put a pause on everything. You know, we were doing so great and we were really ascending quickly. And you know, just like that, pretty much offices, conference rooms were empty. And this is kind of where we did our magic. Came in, we did a lot of presenting. We had our presentations ready to go. And uh, it made it really kind of scary for us because, you know, here we are. Our career was ascending rather fast. You know, we were getting noticed by executives. And uh, just like that, we're at home, we're working. I'm, you know, I'm barefoot in my pajamas. And uh, really, it, it, was, it was hard to deal with, it was hard to adjust to. And on top of that, there was a little bit of fear because, you know, we, we've all worked on the HR dashboards. We kind of know, kind of salary-wise, 
they're kind of at the higher end of the salary spectrum, which pandemic or not, it kind of puts us in a weird place where, you know, if an organization ever decides to cut jobs or positions, our positions are kind of some of the first that are there. I mean, sure, their companies need insights, but how many insights do they need in a time of a pandemic when they're really just trying to keep their doors open and their packages shipping? That's uh, scary. And before long, you start to hear friends and teammates and other people. You know, they're they're getting their orders. It's it's the end. You know, they're either being told to kind of stay in place and not really get paid, furloughs, or even full layoffs. And uh, things got scary. Um, really, it was it was really confusing. And I mean, for a lot of these folks, you know, they really did feel like they got the rug pulled out from under them. And, you know, it's it's tough. It's tough. Even if, if you were someone who stayed on the team, you know, there's a lot of guilt there, kind of a survivor's remorse. You know, somehow you've managed to make it, but, uh, you know, the rest of your team might have gotten cut as well. Um, this is hard. It's really hard to deal with. And on top of that, you know, we're working from home, but it seems like every time we turn around, there's just a new disaster waiting right around the corner. You know, it really, year itself was was incredibly traumatic. It just seemed like everything was happening all at once as soon as we let our guard down. You know, not one thing, not two things, but, you know, like I said, I was a social ambassador, so I spent a lot of time um, online. And, you know, days, day after day, I went through and saw, you know, seven, eight, nine friends talking about, you know, a loved one who'd passed. And, you know, at this point, well, you know, your career doesn't seem that important, does it? So you're looking at a disaster and pretty much every corner you turn seems to be another disaster. At one point, it starts to normalize. You know, this becomes quite normal. And uh, it's weird when disasters were happening just about everywhere. So what do you do? Well, it kind of, the only thing we can do is all of us, we've kind of made it through this, this far. You know, we start to kind of look at it and make peace with the disaster. In a weird way, we kind of look into it and think, how can we make, you know, good with everything that's happening around us? You know, we're not going to sit around and just watch it happen. Um, but, you know, what do we do? And we see a lot of people, they've started ordering exercise equipment. Um, they've made their garages at home into gyms or their basements into gymnasiums so they can stay fit. Um, you know, people start ordering exercise bikes and treadmills to keep in the house. Um, you have friends that are taking college courses and, you know, trying to trying to keep busy people taking on baking careers at home. Um, a lot is happening, but, uh, what did I decide to do? Well, social media guy here decides to obsess about a very obscure quote that Elijah Meeks wrote back in 2017. Where, you know, I'm still in disaster mode, so I, I like to kind of keep in that disaster mind frame of um, Elijah said here, he said, most people in data visualization end up transitioning into data science or engineering or UI because there's something wrong with the state of data viz. And uh, this was incredibly controversial, and I think it was great when it went out, and I think it, it, it kind of left me kind of perplexed. You know, what does this mean? You know, where's the future for someone within a database career? You know, what can we do? Ah, it is somewhat perplexing. What to do now? So I wondered, you know, is, is database kind of a dead end career? You know, is this kind of as good as it gets? Do we move on from here? You know, what do we do? And, uh, you know, before I deflate everybody, I will let you know a little bit more about um, Elijah's, Elijah's uh, tweet. Um, now, Elijah Meeks, he's really kind of the, the data viz philosopher, and he's good at kind of throwing these things out there to really get people to think. And uh, he kind of also can somewhat see in the future, in like a weird way. He wants people to, to really talk about these things and brings these things to the surface. And as he said later on, um, he had a blog post and he talked on, on different podcasts about this. Um, it, was, it was great because it kind of brought the community up and everyone asked a lot of questions. But, you know, he was really saying he was kind of in a bubble in the um, Silicon Valley area. And, you know, seeing people move away from data visualization into different careers, well, I guess that makes sense. 
But something he said really resounded with me was that, you know, there might be a ceiling as to as far, you know, how far can we get with a date of his career? You know, you don't really hear about too many, you know, business intelligence leaders in the, you know, kind of the, the C-suite. You don't really hear about these guys as executives. You don't, you don't really hear kind of what's that next step. And there is, I mean, right now there are a few companies now with chief data officers, which could be a path. But it's still a bit disconnected from data viz. And then on top of that, you know, the, a lot of the work that we do is very confidential. It's within buildings, on hard drives, on networks, um, hidden within clouds. We can't quite share that. So it becomes kind of hard to uh, to build out and make a path of this. So, uh, you know, I uh, sat at home, worked from home, and I pondered this for days. And, you know, days quickly became weeks, and weeks melded into weekends, especially when you're working from home. Because if you hadn't figured out, when you work from home, weeks and weekends are kind of dissimilar. <laughs> so, um, I thought about this, you know, what, what to do, what can I do? And, you know, really the first thing that came to mind was, hey, do what you love and data is something I love and I'm gonna do what I love. And that really resounded until, you know, a few days passed and kind of my internal messaging system here just kind of went, well, what then? You know, uh, what happens now? All right. You know, we're kind of back to that same stage. Well, you know, it's like I, I start thinking. What I need is kind of more of a, a career plan. Kind of like uh, Kevin McAllister's here. Um, maybe not as as in depth and doesn't involve paint cans or flames um, and robbers, but uh, still it, it's good to have a plan. And I considered the plan a lot. You know, I kind of wondered what is it that I need? It was harder to map out where I wanted to go. So I started mapping out what I wanted to avoid. What was it that I want to really, I didn't want in my career, you know, and I, I came up with a you know, list that I call the three M's. Now, this isn't for everybody too, because there are a lot of people who are moving in different directions. But personally, this is kind of what I, I saw and kind of what I felt too, was uh, I wanted to avoid these three M's and they were management. I really, I, I've been there, I've done it, you know, do I want to do performance evaluations and fill out tons of forms and track down tickets and be the escalation point? I've done it. It's good. It's fun. I mean, it, I'm not saying I won't ever do it again. Actually, uh, possibly quite soon, I might change my mind and decide this is, this is kind of the way to go. But um, I kind of wanted to stay away from this just because I like being an individual contributor and doing the work I do. So management was that first M. And from there, Monotony. And uh, if you don't know this movie, there's a great movie, it's called Groundhog Day, where um, the great Bill Murray um, goes through and uh, really uh, kind of goes over the same day, day in, day out. And that's not what I wanted from our career or job either. I don't wanna be doing the same thing in and out every day. And finally, mediocrity. I didn't wanna be mediocre. You know, really, I wanted to kind of go out there and do awesome things or, you know, if I fail every once in a while, you know, hey, well, that's that's true, too. You can fail and you can definitely learn and grow from that. You know, and I, I saw I saw a mention here of passion. Passion is definitely where it's at. This is where your passion comes out. You really want to do great work. So mediocrity was something I was not looking for either in a career. So how do I get there? You know, what to do? And this is also for, for folks out there too that may have these questions. Where do I go from here? I really enjoy doing what I'm doing now, but sometimes, you know, management will try to ask you for a plan. So, you know, the truth is you gotta do something. You know, come out there and, and you gotta figure out what to do. Well, if you've been in the Tableau community for any bit of time, you'll realize that one thing that you know the folks in the community do exceptionally well is they share and you know it's not necessarily ice cream but uh, what they'll do a lot is they'll take their skills and start to share them and you know this is easy to do it doesn't take anything and you know once you realize it at an organization we're all in this together 
it becomes easy to do. You don't have to just do this at work too. You can do this online, on LinkedIn, on the Tableau forums. There's a lot you can do where you can go through and share. Um, one thing that drives me nuts too is I I used to hear this a lot, and I'm starting it's starting to kind of go away. But you'll every once in a while you'll start to hear somebody talk about this, and they'll use the phrase job security, or they'll kind of allude to this concept where they may be the only person in an organization that knows how to do something. And that's antiquated. You know, now in this economy, we're a sharing economy. Really, what you share is what you're worth. It's not what you can do and hide away from others. So keep that in mind, because really it will it will really make a difference. You know, as my kids tell me, sharing is caring. And you can't get, you can't really expect to get if you don't give. So, you know, you've got these things that are in your mind. They're there, they're sitting away, they're helpful. Go ahead, share them. I don't know how many times I've seen people floundering and just watched other experts you know, just kind of sit there and watch them flounder. Not really in the Tableau community, because really at this point, the, the experts make sure you don't really spend a lot of time uh, spinning your wheels, trying to figure something out. They know the way, you know, get it out there. And before long, you'll see this makes a difference. You know, go out, create a Slack, channel or some sort of internal sharing method at the office and you'll start finding there are other people out there that want to do the same thing they're eager to share and you'll see there, there's a team of you and it becomes more community driven it's it's really grassroots and it's fantastic believe it or not your executives will love this because it's coming from inside it's coming from within this is really building collaboration and on top of it, you're finding folks that are experts. You know, they might be experts at Tableau Server, or they might be experts on permissioning, or they might be experts in databases, or different connections, or level of detail calculations, or table calculations. You know, start building these bonds. You know, really get get through and, and build this team. And hey, you know what? Get together, go out, have happy hours, have a lunch. You know, get, have <laughs> Slack calls. You know, do what you need to do to get these folks together and really, you know, once, once everybody's, you know, that team and you know, who's there. Let them in on your secret, your what your secret. Something you've been thinking about. And now that you've got kind of a loosely organized team and a place for people to come to get help. Well, let's start a band. No, just kidding. Uh, I just want to make sure you guys were listening. Um, no, let's start a COE. And sorry, when I'm building a visual, a, a really a, a presentation out of GIFs, it's kind of hard to find any GIFs on COEs, but uh, thankfully I found this one. But uh, let's build a team of superstars. You know, you, you know who they are. You can kind of come through and help people kind of when they need it. You know, let's start to formalize this. Let's start to, to really build more of an establishment at the organization that people can trust. And, uh, you know, of course you wanna go through and include your Tableau server admin, because, well, you know, they need friends too, but uh, no, they, they're fantastic. You know, you're, usually your Tableau server admin, believe it or not, can be one of the best resources at your organization. They know who's using Tableau. They also know the champions and they know who the power users are too. Um, in most cases, it's a very, um, really, I guess, underrated role they, they the work that they do is fantastic so really go through and make friends with your your tableau server admin um and get them out of that uh, that server room um also go through and make friends with your um your tableaus your tableau sales reps the team tableau and now also some of the folks on the the salesforce teams um really get them involved because th there's a lot that's going to be happening very soon but they can tell you who the users are too who has um, who has, uh, you know, really, they've got the best contacts and who are the power users, you know, who are building some of these great projects. And before long, you know, you can start being the networker and the communicator with them and really getting people in contact with each other might be doing similar work or might be able to learn from each other. Um, also, on top of that, and Tableau has this great document out. It's called Blueprint. If you haven't looked at it, Probably it's a good idea to go through and take a look at Tableau Blueprint. It's, it's only a Google search away. And uh, 
one of the best things out there, really. It, it gives you a lot of ideas as to how you can, you know, kind of build within your organization with Tableau. And it's not just Tableau centric. Um, a lot of this is just data centric too. So definitely get through and use your imagination. But uh, get a hold of Tableau Blueprint and take a look at this. Um, also, you might want to put together an event. Well, safely. Um, just shocks me. We used to do this. How close are standing to each other? might be in the crowd, you know, um, but uh, put together an event, get the people together. You know, you might want to do this virtually and, you know, call a couple of champions. People that are doing great work with Tableau. People you may want to show off their work um, to the rest of the organization so that this way people can start learning from other people. And you, once again, you're building that network. You become a networker where you're introducing people to other people who are doing similar work. And you'll start to see other organizations within your, I mean, pretty much other departments within your organization will get ideas. And uh, sometimes a little bit of copycat syndrome happens here too. But, um, but get people together, get them organized and get them meeting each other. Well, you might be sitting there and going, wait, 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 no, 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 no. Me, you want me to do this? Well, it might not be for you. You know, yeah, yeah, I know it's not, not you, you know, but oh, okay, 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 sure. Sure, but there, there are other ways. May, okay, I know maybe your organization's too small. Um, yeah, all right. <laughs> so the COA may not be the way or the path for you. So let, let's explore something different. You know, let, let's take a look and see. You know, maybe it's it's about gaining skills, and you know, it's time to develop some new skills. You know, well, maybe some better skills. Let's let's talk about you know maybe it's about in, enhancing your ability to use Tableau and table calcs level of details, um, actions, uh, learning a little bit more about GIS and mapping. Um, also, there's certain things you can do with, you know, project management, pick up some, some project management skills, especially when it comes to, to building out um, dashboards and reports and getting things, you know, a bit more organized, either agile or waterfall, learn about both. Um, in addition to that, maybe picking up some uh, coding skills. You know, you can learn a lot about the cloud or um, Python or R or Golang or and even, even SQL. Uh, I know so many, so many folks in this in this realm that don't know enough about SQL. You know, just some basic things which will probably help you a lot in your career as well. And uh, then also you can pick up some of the some of the cool um, workflow programs too. You know, learn more about prep or learn more about um, all tricks, you know, these, these tools that we use to join data and we can automate a bit more with these tools as well. But, uh, the idea and something I've always kind of kept in mind was, you know, well, let's try to work towards becoming a data team of 1. Someone that can kind of do it all. And that's kind of 1 of the things and really that you're looking for in your, your skills building. You know, where do you want to, where do you want to be? Do you want to be that person who can kind of just take on everything? And, you know, organizations have these and they're, you know, very rare to find somebody who can do just about a little bit of everything. And you don't need to do it at, at an expert level, but as long as you understand it, it helps you move on in that career. So I skipped ahead. Um, so you kind of look at me and, and say, well, you know, no matter what I try, no matter what I learn, it's not working. I'm not getting anywhere in my organization, you know, really. I've tried everything and there's really no major path that is just opening up for me. Um, some cases it might be management, it might be my boss, it might even be me, you know, but before you get too too frustrated, take a deep look and, you know, really, if, it, if it's not something that you can control, well, maybe it's time to kind of move on. If you don't see a future and really nothing working, um, it might be time to move on to a different organization. You know, really at this point, it, it becomes a little scary for a lot of people to leave something that they may know very well. But um, it's it's possible. You know, you can kind of pack up the bag and walk out the door. You know, don't turn around. Um, but uh, but some advice too is if you're leaving an organization, make sure not to burn a bridge. You know, definitely go through and leave it with civility, leave it with a lot of respect. And you'll see, I've actually seen, I don't know how many colleagues have left the position only to come back to the same company again later on, a couple of years back in, the in kind of in the future. 
so consider this. You know, I, I know I've I've told I told a chief data officer when I was leaving a position, you know, hey, you know, I, I don't necessarily want to close the door here. You know, there may be a way that I could go out and learn a lot more new skills and bring them back into the company. So I, I think that's something that she appreciated. But um let's talk about kind of that interview stage, you know, and I'm not gonna get too deep into that, but you do have a lot of amazing skills. And one of the biggest tips I have when you're looking and interviewing is you know, really kind of take a step back and look at your positioning. You know, where are you here? What what are you planning on doing? And you're really shopping for a new organization that's better than the one that you were at. You know, something that would actually give you something that you may not have had beforehand because it wasn't working just a couple of slides back. You know, this is kind of why we're 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 making this change. If we're gonna make such a change, you know, it's also we're gonna consider certain things like salary. Is salary gonna be better? Or um, in some cases, I've even I, I've, I've even gone through and, and have given up some salary for other perks, like being really close to the office, or just really having a lot more control in what I get to do from day to day. Um, it might become less stressful, and you know, hey, you know, just a couple of thousand dollars less, but you know, I won't be as stressed out all the time. I won't be working till two a.m. in the morning. I really will be able to close my system, and you know, I'm at home. Um, and enjoying time with my family. So, so consider that also. Um, but there, there's a lot to consider when you're interviewing. I'm not going to go into it because um, the person I'm going to refer everybody to is Paul Benoob. It, Paul Benoob is a uh, he's a Tableau Zen master, um, but now he actually has a YouTube channel. And uh, definitely look up Paul's YouTube channel because when it comes to management and career and career advice, he's one of the guys I go to. Um, watch his definitely watch his channel. He's got a couple of courses also um, when it comes to interviewing and it comes to looking at for new positions. And on top of it, he's a data biz guy. You know, he's done a lot of work with Tableau COEs. He knows that as well. So he'll, he'll pepper a little bit of that in. But a lot of what he talks about is is, is very general and it's amazing, amazing um, things you've never quite considered when you go into an interview. What to ask for? So uh, definitely look up Paul Benoob. Um, so, you know, kind of the best case scenario here is, you know, you're hired. There's nothing out there like, you know, pretty much starting anew, moving into a new company and, uh, you know, kind of, get, you know, getting started again and getting that is, is, is amazing. You know, you go through and you post it on LinkedIn and you get congratulations from just about everyone you knew, you know, that, you know, the guy you've known since you were in kindergarten. Now. One of the things I didn't quite cover is the path up to the executive offices. And also, this is something where I think I'll bring in Paul Benoob again, because a lot of his his suggestions and his um, ideas will help you get there. It's something that I think is kind of beyond this conversation. But I mean, for the most part, there are paths there. Um, really, it's not that DataViz has been closed off. If you look at organizations, um, like JLL, where Paul Chapman has come in in a very little amount of time, he's gone through and has really made a world of difference in their organization. He's been able to hire um, people and experts globally and build a wonderful team. Um, so, you know, really these guys, uh, actually both the Pauls, I've said it before, I'll say it again, these guys have really written the textbook on how to go through and build a really successful career when it comes to data visualization. Um, and it's not about, you know, getting there and climbing to the top, it's about sharing. If, you, if you've ever met Paul Chapman, he is fantastic about motivating folks. I don't know, he's, he's actually, he's given me so many ideas on talks, um, just in conversations, little things he said. He's like, ah, oh, you, can, you can present on that. <laughs> so he's, he's definitely a great thing, but, also, at the same time, you know, when you're networking, meet these folks, you know, get out there, have your conversations, tell them about your dreams and your plans, and they will help you move along. They'll help you get ahead. So pretty much that, in a nutshell, is the really kind of some of the tips I've got for your career. Now, one thing I do want to share, and here, let me move this over. 
is probably one of the visualizations I've done. It's given me the most reward through this. And I, I've, I've, uh, if you don't know me, this is my my Tableau public um, profile. It's it's not all that great because it it kind of is a place I go um, mostly for fun when I have a moment and I, I've got an idea and I want to build it out and uh, I want to talk about this viz because uh, this has really made a difference for um, not just me but it, it's been incredibly rewarding and I think some of you have seen it it was, uh, it was bundled along with the with the invite here but it's a visualization that shows off um, now this is just for the U S. But what I've done is I've gone to indeed.com and you can do this pretty much anywhere around the world. Um, you can go through and apply for an API key with indeed.com. This is probably the hardest thing is getting the API key, which is not hard at all. It's actually very easy to do. Um, thank you. Thank you about the visual. I'll get to that in a second because um, I'll let you know that I also, I, I, I subscribe to something that's called stealing like an artist because I, I was inspired. Um, but I'll talk more about just kind of the layout and everything else with this, but um, really, this is something that as the pandemic hit, I actually put this together um, for myself, not as nice, but uh, <laughs> um, but uh, it really the um, I, it, something I used when I was looking for a new position. And I had a couple of things in mind and things that I was looking for. And once again, also, those things that I wanted to avoid when I was looking in a, in a position, um, wanted to find something that was nearby. It was it's it's nice now to see that you know remote jobs. Now we've got uh, today at least this this visualization comes through and it refreshes daily. So every day there is new data here. So this is very up to date, and if you're looking for work, you know possibly even with Indeed. Um, you can go through, click on that, and you see there's 25 jobs. You can see all 25 listed here if you if you go through. And as you as you do that, you can also kind of you see something you think you like. You can click on that, and it'll take you there. Well, it won't take you there, but uh, <laughs> hang on, I've got the Indeed API open, so it's trying to open that there. But granted, it should take you there. We go to that wreck. And here, if you want to be the international product analyst for France for Indeed, you can now go through and apply. Um, so that's something that you can you can totally do with this. And this will show you those newest thousand jobs here in the US. And you'll see some there's some real dream jobs here. Um, you know, do you want to work for Netflix? You know, hey, maybe I can help my uh, my, my buddy Christian James Hand get a show. At Netflix and do what he does on a, on a on a weekly basis there, uh, work at the CIA. Hey, look at that! Um, Electronic Arts, <laughs> even work for Foot Locker, get some great uh, <laughs> deals on shoes. Um, but you know, working at Showtime or Spotify, you got some great great positions here. And if you're looking for something new, this is what's new out there. You know, you got Deloitte, you got some of the biggest companies here, and these are all the ones that are hiring. Um, for these positions, so I did not mean to go backwards, but uh, but I also have have one out there for um, Alteryx positions too, um, built the exact same way. So how do these work? Or well, let me let me actually start off first by um, talking about the uh, kind of the the inspiration. So really, kind of the first thing there was to go through and. Uh, Get an inspiration. I, I knew what I wanted to, to visualize. Um, something I do a lot is I go to Behance. And this is Behance.com. And this is something I saw while kind of paging through Behance. And you go, hey, wait a second. That, wait, wait, wait. Yes, exactly. That is exactly it. I got inspiration from a poster. You know, I saw this and look at that. Hey, that's an amazing view. That's an amazing design. And this is not something I did. I've actually watched a lot of um, a lot of graphic designers do the same thing. When you ask them, you know, how do they come up with these ideas so quickly? It doesn't necessarily need to be Behance. Um, it can be anything. Uh, the graphic designers that I've seen, some of them will just go to, uh, to you know secondhand thrift shops, and they're looking at stickers, old industrial stickers on machinery, and you know these colors work well together. You know the font looks good. That's kind of something that you want to work with. 
well, you know, let's kind of start to build that into your visualization. Get inspired and build towards that. And you'll see that your visualizations really start to take off. You know, here you don't have to think about color because the, the color was already taken care of. It was something I was building towards. So that's kind of really my big tip when it comes to designing and something that will save you a lot of time is get inspired first and build towards that. Um, secondly, just looking at the kind of what's running, what's running this, what's behind the scenes, you know, how do we go through and how do we make, make this all work and how do we make it dynamic so that we're getting those thousand job postings? Well, I'm using a Google sheet. If you've never used a Google sheet connector, give it a try in Tableau public. Um, I learned about this from Ben Jones when it, when it released in Tableau public, he put on a blog post and I immediately thought, Hey, this is awesome. Um, I forgot who else did a blog post about, um, about using the import HTML. I think it was actually Ben. He did an import HTML post and really I'm using an import HTML call here. I have the API from indeed here. Let me go back and see if, uh, of course I didn't, <laughs> that didn't say it, but here. Here we go. Indeed API. This will take me to the Indeed engineering page and it'll show me how to build that API. Really, the API is nothing more than just a URL. So that's kind of, that's it, really it. You know, it, it's, it's really simple and easy to use. And you've got a couple of different parameters you can put in here. Really, my parameters were, um, you know, show me those next 25 records. And here in this case, you know, it's coming through and showing me those start at, start at zero, limit to 25. And uh, because this is built for the website, um, I have to go through on my sheet. And this is probably the other harder part of this is on my sheet, I come through and every 25 rows, I asked it to give me the next 25 records because this, their, their API is really designed for their website. So, you know, I come through here and I put this on where I tell it to start at 50 uh, before I asked it to start at 25 and I go on until about a thousand. I stopped at a thousand because I didn't want to keep rebuilding that, uh, that call everywhere in the Google sheet. I save my Google sheet really here on uh, really it's just Google and through Tableau public or just Tableau in general too. I can connect to it. Um, when I go through and I upload my visualization to Tableau Public, though, every day on these Google connections, Tableau will come through. And I think for this one, it's around 6 a.m. Eastern time here in the U.S. It will update my visualization. So I have the most up-to-date data I can possibly get. Um, I had one viz where I tried to hack it so I could get it to update every 15 minutes, and it worked really well uh, for, for a couple of days. Um, but then things started to change and it was very hacky. Um, I don't necessarily need to know about my jobs or the jobs out there every 15 minutes, but, um, 1 of the reasons this was so rewarding and was fantastic to have out there was that, um, when I found, and I saw friends posting about either them or friends of friends that had lost positions, um, that, you know, kind of, they were looking at Tableau. Um, positions. Well, here, here, I've got this. this is, I've built this. You know, you can use this. I didn't quite expect, you know, I really, the idea I came into when I built this viz was I wanted to share this with folks. But um, really, what I, what I also wanted to do was design wise, I wanted to build a visualization that was incredibly bright. It had a bright background and it worked. And um, that was kind of why I was using that design inspiration, because I was looking for something that had a really bright background and worked. Of course, one of the visualizations that probably gets the most views is that visualization you built because you wanted to challenge yourself and build something with a very bright background. Um, every response I got back from people who saw this was, uh, hey, that's really bright. Don't you want to tone down the color a little bit? I'm like, no, 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 that's that's the point. I want this really bold color. And uh, I, I found out later on um, from, from folks that hey, bright colors like this on dashboards, not the best of ideas. Sometimes it is better to tone it down because you know people can get headaches from looking at some, some of these things. Really, if, if you suffer from migraines, this doesn't help. So keep that in mind. But, uh, but yeah, once again, I wasn't quite thinking that this would take off kind of like it did, I should have. 
but uh, I didn't. <laughs> so, um, so it, it's it's very easy to work with this too, because as I found through the pandemic, I started to see, you know, friends were looking for positions with all, you know, really Alteryx, um keywords. Um, and I saw a listing where a number of UX and UI designers had lost positions. So, hey, you know, I can change this rather quickly. All I had to do was change this in my API call. And I, I changed the color in the background just slightly so I could tell the difference. But here, you know, let me put this out for, you know, these folks that have lost this position. I've done this for biotech engineers. And I've done it for civil engineers. I've done it for a bunch of different friends. Um, but, you know, it, it's it's kind of nice to have this where I can just kind of take it down, pull it back up rather quickly. You know, one of the dreams is I wish I could actually get it. And I'm, I'm pretty sure I can do this is to talk back to the Google sheet and update the um, update the query so you can plug in anything and it will just go ahead and you know keep it dynamic that way. I never got that far, but still really a good idea of kind of like a next step for it, hopefully. But this is something I've done and really incredibly rewarding. I put it out in the community and really I do it for for folks out there that you know might be in need, might need a, a new position. I mean, right now, even there's so many of us that have been um, well, even physically sheltering in place, but also I think we've been metaphorically in some cases, uh, a number of us at our positions. I've talked to a lot of friends that, you know, they thought they were going to make all these career changes right, right before the pandemic hit. Um, now that's happening. So, oh, well, thank you. So there, there's a lot of, a lot of great, a lot of great messages coming through. So always great to see those, but, um, but yeah, I mean, really, these are this something that um, it took just a, a quick little idea and this is something that i do you know I'm, I'm a data person i like using data and understanding data to make just not just my life easier but hey you know i, I did this for myself when i was looking for a position let me share it you know i've got the data it's easy to use and i can just kind of make it a little prettier and uh you know share it out with folks and now we've got just kind of a quick way for them to use this, um, and it, it's fun too. I, I've gotten a lot of questions about you know how, how it works, and just that it you know it updates daily. Sometimes the the, the feed will break, but uh, I haven't had a break in a very long time. I think I have to thank Andy Kreeble because he's also using the same method, I believe, for his uh, Makeover Monday visualization. So he's really he's really been writing. Uh, the Tableau public team to make sure that their Google connector is is a very solid and stable one too. Um, but uh, but yeah, it, it's it's definitely been a really rewarding. So uh, I think with that, that's pretty much everything I've got. Very last thing I wanted to point out is a uh, someone else here who's also in the DC area. Someone I respect a lot. Um, Ali Torben has a uh, she has a, a podcast called Data Biz Today, but. She put out a great blog post, and this is something I come back to and look at, and I was just actually just reminded of this the other day when someone had thanked Allie for putting this out there. Um, it really, you know, here you've got a number of questions that you can think about, you know, on your professional career and kind of what you do in data biz. And this is great because I, I didn't quite want to touch on these because they're out there and they're fantastic on their own. So this is, this is, wonderful, a wonderful post, and it gives you a couple of ideas on how to frame that career and kind of what you can do next. You know, ideas about collaborating with folks, you know, those people you can talk data biz with, and uh, really it is building more of a support system. So Ali has done an excellent job here. I really wanted to put this post out there and share it um, with all of you as well, because, you know, this this might actually help you um, to guide through your next few steps with the database career. So hopefully this helps. Hopefully very inspiring for folks. And um, really, I'm, I'm open to any questions now. So uh, <laughs> thanks. Thank you, Sita. I think it was incredible for sharing. I think these resources with everyone, right? And and one thing which I have realized is the it's the beauty of the community, right? Like if you're ever facing this pressure, you can reach out to people and they're ready to help you. So thank you. Thank you for sharing everything with the community. Oh, absolutely. It, it, this is this is something that really it, it, it's it, it's a reward in itself. You know, really, the, the more you hear these thank yous from people, 
um, the more, you know, hey, I did something great. I'm happy and it really makes makes for a fantastic day. Perfect. So if you have any question for Caesar, just go ahead and put it into the comment. Or the chat option and I'm happy to go ahead and ask him. So Caesar, I want to ask you, how did your journey started, right? You mentioned you have been in this data visualization in the BI industry for the last 15 years, right? So yeah. do you want to talk about exactly it started and, and you picked up Tableau, right? And what was yes. your yes. first thing when you went ahead and started using Tableau? Excellent question. So it, it's funny because I've, I've always kind of shied away. When I was younger, um, I did a lot of programming. I actually started programming in the fourth grade. And I started with basic and then moved on to Pascal and COBOL and Fortran and moved into started a little bit of C. And this pretty much lasted when I was, you know, really in through my, my, my lower grade years. And the big reason there was that, you know, back in those days, you could actually go to the grocery store and buy a computer magazine and they would have computer games in the back. And I would come home and quick, quickly code them and then start modifying the games. And, uh, you know, this was something I did for fun. And I, I used my dad's work computer to, to get far. Um, with this, but I didn't, it's not what I wanted to do professionally. Um, later on, you know, through high school and college, my dad would hire me on to go to his company and help them with the databases. And I hated it. It was the worst, most boring job ever. Um, but I learned a lot about databases that way. Um, later on through college, you know, I, I thought I, you know, I was coming out, the web, web was coming in, into mind. I thought I was going to be a great web designer and, you know, all of a sudden everything crashed pretty much right as I, as I was coming into, uh, coming into the market, everything crashed, jobs evaporated. And, you know, I, I found out, you know, they're, they're paying kind of pennies on the dollar for these really high paid positions I thought I was set for. So I kind of went into sales and, you know, my, my technical skills kept coming out and I kept getting pulled into technical projects and became a, a technical project manager. And I was asked to evaluate a number of tools and uh, for, for really BI work. And at the time I was actually helping out a project that was a business intelligence project where what we were doing was we were taking our Salesforce CRM and we were joining in other data sets. And uh, that was, it was a fantastic project, had a lot of fun. And then I found Tableau and realized I could do this all in Tableau. It was amazing. And I kind of dropped everything and just started using Tableau. And before long, I was helping out the marketing team and helping out the HR team. And uh, I kind of quickly became the Tableau expert. And I moved away from that just because I, you know, I, I, I still, data wasn't where I was, I was going, I thought. And I went to work for a COE um, at a very large, one of the big four um, companies, um, the consulting companies, and um, was working mostly in knowledge management and SharePoint, where of course I get pulled back into metrics. I get pulled back into using, you know, these reporting tools. And at the time I wasn't allowed to use Tableau. So it really, that, that's kind of how it started um, from there. It just, it was a whirlwind. Once I, I really kind of gave up the fight and just started using Tableau full time, um, my career took off. And it's really something too that I, I think maybe that helps um, some folks too. If there's something that you've been trying to avoid that you're good at, why not just go ahead and keep, you know, go ahead and give, <laughs> give up the fight, dive in, and you'll see it might be incredibly rewarding. Thank you. Thank you, Caesar. Okay. So Ralph is asking, first of all, he's, I think, just thanking you about the contribution you have gone ahead and make to the community. His question is more in regards to how we can get buy-in from leaders on sponsoring community initiatives within business. And what levers would you suggest resonate will put a case together to support this? Right, right. So it's hard to do from the get-go. It's it's hard to really just walk into a leader's, leader's office and go, okay, we need to do this. But sometimes that's what they'll listen to. Um, it's incredible. It, sometimes it's it's the passion, how you how you present this. But also, uh, from one thing they've always considered was the the ROI. You always have to kind of let people know. I, I had one um, I had one leader, an executive I worked with. He would always kind of refer to it as, you know, hey, when you come and talk to me, start off from the what's in it for me angle. 
And he really meant, he was like, he wanted me to frame it from his perspective. What will he gain from this? What will the team gain from this? And kind of how this will make everything better. And it made it so much easier for me to pitch um, executives with ideas. And, you know, something with a, a, like a COE, for example, or, you know, an event or something you want to do is get them involved. You know, hey, t tell your leader, hey, you know, will you come through and be the MC to this? Will you kind of present this and kind of give, you know, your overall idea of what, you know, our team is doing? And then from there, maybe even bring on an, another executive or two um, to just kind of address everything. And before long, you start to see they want to have more buy-in. They want to they want to use the products more. And uh, I, I think that's when you know you've really succeeded is when the executive calls you to their office to help you with a problem, and they're using Tableau to try to figure out. So it, it, it's definitely something where you know just going through and making that pitch. Remember, executives don't have a lot of time. You know, they don't need a very long worded. Um, Elevator, you know, really keep it as an elevator pitch. You know, if, if you've ever watched the show Shark Tank, think of that. They really come to the point quickly and they do a good job of, of letting you know what they want to do and what they want from you. Um, and that's also the other thing is be sure to ask, you know, make it a clear request. Um, don't allude to things, you know, with an executive, they don't have time for this. Come through and say, hey, we want to put on an event. I want you to be the MC. And I want you to suggest another executive that so you know is concerned with data and analytics, and we want to hold this sometime in October. So let's check your calendar and see if you can make this. And it, it it's different because this is the kind of the world they live in. You need to be able to really empathize for for their their sake. You know what their time constraints are, and if you're doing all the work, you're arranging everything, and kind of they just need to show up, say a few words, and kick off an event. Fantastic. So I yeah, love, loved your analogy. Loved your analogy about Shark Tank, right? Keep it small, crisp, and it should be clear about what is your ask from them. So yeah, thank you for that. Yeah. And just just to continue on the community part, what has been the role of community in your journey, right? And what is one advice you will give people who wants to go ahead and start with Tableau community? Yes. Yes. So community is, it, it's interesting because it's, there are a number of microcosms within the community. There's a, a global community and it's, it's great to be a, a part of this global community where now, you know, I'm talking to people all around the planet, um, but you know, it starts off locally. It starts off with the people you work with, you know, get started there, um, get started with, you know, your local Tableau user group or data groups. Um, they can do this online as well. But get to know the people, you know, go through, talk to them. And it, it's great to have these conversations and you'll start to find, you know, there are people are talking about, you know, other, other designers or other uh, concepts you may never have ever heard of, you know, don't be afraid to ask them more about this. What is this? How do I find out more? You know, where do I find this? Um, definitely open up and you'll see there's it, the community itself will just kind of embrace you and introduce you to more and more people. Um, it, it's interesting because I, I do a lot of, of searching on Tableau public and looking for, uh, just great folks and, uh, great ideas. And I make it a point to search these people out and maybe, you know, it's like, Hey, how did you get this idea? I'll ask them online. Um, or, you know, if I, if back when we had in-person conferences, yeah, I, I remember going up to Chantilly Jagernoff and going, Hey, I love your visualization. How did you come up with this concept? You know, you're on fire. Everything you put out is amazing. You know, tell me more about this. And, you know, I, I found out, you know, hey, we're going to the same session. Let's go, let's sit together. We can chat. And uh, it, it's, it, it's, it's one of those things where, you know, it's, it's a very open and welcoming community. And it, it's nice to see that. And like I said, I've met, you know, the, the Zen masters and, you know, both the Pauls, Paul, Paul Benoob and Paul Chapman. And they were instrumental in introducing me to other people like uh, Fiona Gordon, um, you know, and talking about her Tableau server build. You know, you get these concepts and you get these ideas and you're like, oh, you know what? I should try that in my organization. Um, and you, you get these ideas of what people really what people are doing at, at their offices and what's working for them or sometimes what's not working for them. Um, some of the best people in the community are folks that I trust and rely on because they will tell me straight out about, hey, yeah, we tried this and it was an absolute flop. You know, don't even bother. 
using that technology. You know, now we're using this and it's saving us tons of money and, you know, really making a world of difference. Um, so, you know, find those people that you can trust and rely on because they've been there, they've done it. And before long, you become that person. So uh, be, be, be frank and open also. But, um, Thank you, Caesar. And you have put it rightly in terms of how the community has been engaging. And I have been hosting this WIS Connect session for the last two years. And every time I approach a Tableau Zen Master, a champion, or a you or, or someone who has been using Tableau, they have never said no to this WIS Connect session, right? They're always ready to let's go ahead and find a time and we'll be happy to share our learning, right? I think that that's the beauty of a community, right? Like always there for everyone. And always welcoming, right? Just join us and we'll help help you in terms of enhancing your tableau skills, or it can be about discussing about your career, right? And I think for a lot of people, I mean, if if you look at the um a lot of the folks that are out there helping every day on the just the community forums, you know, they do yeah. this for fun. This is their hobby. They 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 have knowledge that they can share, and it doesn't take them much time. Sometimes they like and they really enjoy that challenge. So that's kind of why they do it. So, yeah, yeah I think we there. had Jim Dim also on the call. Shout out yeah. to him, right? In yeah. terms of just helping everyone on Tableau community, Ken Flerich, Kevin Flerich, everyone, right? Just helping people who are stuck in a particular scenario in Tableau and they are there for you. Andy Cribble, like every week, he's hosting this makeover day session just to help people to understand what's the way he go ahead and tackle the data challenge, right? So yeah, I think inspiration is everywhere. It depends on you now, whichever way you want to pick it and start your journey. Very true, very true. And, you know, build your tribe. You know, it's one of those things where, you know, all these people you've, you've mentioned, you know, they're people I can go to on, on a regular basis and just ask them a quick question of, Hey, if you were doing this in SQL, you know, what, what's the query that you'd put together? Um, you know, I, I don't know how often I've gone through. I, I asked um, Kevin Flerlidge for help with, uh, you know, backing up a SQL server. I've never done it before, but he had some great suggestions. So, you know, really, you know, you, you, you'll find a lot of experts out there and uh, build your tribe. It doesn't need to be a Zen master. You know, you, you'll find people yeah. that are just local that have this knowledge as well. Go through and build these tribes. It's great to have. Thank you. We have just one last question, and it's sure. about what do you think about learning coding skills for visualization, example Python or alternative visualization tools? You know what? It's funny because it's kind of where I started. I, I did start doing a, a bit of D three work, and I liked it. I liked it a lot, but. Um, one thing I had to be aware of is you know, I kind of get into these weird. Like, I, I'll use the term Zen, Zen modes because I kind of everything, you know, I lose focus on everything else and days can go by while I'm coding. Um, it's incredibly helpful. It shows you kind of what's happening behind the scenes in a lot of visualizations. Um, I think it can get you very far too because, like, people like Elijah Meeks that I, I talked about earlier, that's what he does. He's, he's kind of more of a custom data viz person. And he does actually really clearly distinguish between folks that do custom work and folks that use BI tools like Tableau or Power BI. Um, and, you know, th there is a distinction there. There's a lot of there's a lot more creativity um, when you're not um, really using something out of the box. Um, when there's nothing there, you have a blank canvas and some people really thrive in that. Um, for me, I liked the idea to replicate the idea to be able to train and. You know, if I worked on a project, I'd like to be able to hand it off to someone. And that's something that I, I liked a lot about Tableau is that, hey, here's a product and I can drop this off and I can train you how to use it. And then from there, you can build on this and you don't necessarily need to have those skills. So it's, it's a lot more collaborative in that sense. Um, but definitely learn those, you know, really learn to code, learn, learn a lot of those skills. They're out there. It only makes you better. It only makes you better at what we're doing on a day to day basis. Thank you, Caesar. I think with that, it was an honor to have you on Visconnect. Thank you for sharing all your knowledge and passion for data visualization and Tableau. Thank you. Thank you, folks. And everybody in the audience, please, um, if you have any questions, feel free to continue. Just ask me through Twitter. That's usually where you find me. So <laughs> thank you so much, Sager, for having me. It's always, it's always a blast.
Thank you, Caesar. So I think with that, thank you everyone for joining. Be safe, take care, and we'll see you next week. Thank you. Take care.